Hey, Buddy Lindsay here from GoJango. Glad to have you back. Today I want to talk to you about using class-based views and why I think you should actually use them. I really have five reasons I think you should use class-based views. And class-based views are generally kind of controversial in the Django community. You have people that really love them and you have people that really hate them. And you do have people that's in the middle, but like generally people lean one way or the other. But there's a lot of people that use function-based views from learning and they, they aren't sure if they want to use class-based views or not. And so they're trying to kind of understand what they do, why you should use them, or even whether you should or not. So today I want to talk to you about why you should use class-based views. First of all, I am a class-based views component, or component, proponent. I like class-based views and I think they're a great tool and they solve a real problem. And I'm gonna give you five reasons today why I like them and think everyone should be using them. The first one is I think it reduces complexity. And I know probably some of you are rolling your eyes and you know, kind of like, what, what, why would it reduce complexity? And the key is it reduces your complexity, not the complexity of everything entirely. Because let's face it, class-based views are kind of complex and there's a lot of uh, discussion about how complex they are. Um, once you learn them really well, they're not as complex anymore in your brain uh, because you know what to do and where and you know exactly where to go to research out you know, the specific pieces that you need. But let's take a look at a few examples. You have a detail view. The detail view you can inherit from and all you have to do is set a model and that's it. Uh, if you know the default naming scheme, then you can create a template from there and uh, there you go. You're able to view the data in the template with two lines of code. I personally like to go another step for step farther and set the template name and the context object name. And that way it makes things a little bit easier when I'm dealing with my templates. However, uh, that's all you need to see a specific piece of information on in a template about an object. And that's actually really great because a lot of times all we wanna do is really see one piece of information on our website for a specific model. So let's say you have you know, a post model from a blog post, you click on it and you see all the details about that post and all you really need is that one model inside of your templates to do everything you need to accomplish. So you know those two lines or four lines are actually really good. And you know now you could argue, hey, you can do the exact same thing in uh, in two lines uh, with a function-based view, but, and I'll get to it here in a little bit, there's a lot of things that class-based view give you if you go ahead and use them over a function-based view. Let's also look at the list view. It takes the same thing. It takes either a model or a query set. It also takes a context object name and a template name that you inherit from, and you're kind of ready to go to start using and seeing a list of things on the website. And then the same thing for a form view, it's actually fairly simple. You give it a form class, you give it a template, you give it a success URL, and you are ready to go. And kind of one of the things that I like is that uh, it takes care of the fact that it needs to be a post. You don't have to say, hey, is this method a post? You don't have to check for that. You don't have to check, you don't have to stuff your and create a new class in order to stuff everything in there to check if the form is valid. If the form is valid, you override the form valid method and pass it a parameter of form and you go about your way. Same thing with the form invalid method. If it's invalid, you override that method and you do what you need to do. And then when you quickly look at that class, you're like, oh, it's a form view. Okay, here's what happens whenever a form is valid and here's what happened is a form is invalid. And so it's super simple. There's actually a number of other generic class-based views that I like to use that are super simple and it gets me to getting done a lot quicker. But there's also the regular class-based view that is the view and it kind of has some simplicity in it. If you just want to kind of use a view and you don't want to use all the generic stuff, and there are benefits to using that. Um, one of them being that it helps you to put everything inside of a class so all of your other code can live inside of this class. You can do this with class-based views as well. So let's say you have a lot of individual functionality and there's just several chunks in there that can live you know, on their own to a degree. They can't live and they aren't very useful outside of this view, but you know they could live on their own and you could give it a more descriptive name. Well, if you put it all inside of a class, you know it kind of helps you with keeping everything into a single chunk 
and it also has the effect of making it more testable. And that's my second reason I like class-based views is it's more testable. If you chunk out your code and you create more fun methods inside of your classes, you can write more testable code and you can unit test it better. You can say, hey, if I have this piece of thing going on and I throw this piece of information in through here, I can test exactly what's gonna happen in there. And instead of trying to do some really weird, funny, you know, long process tests, you know, from top to bottom of a function-based view, I can really like sink in on one little piece of code and I could test that really, really well and be about my business. And which also leads me to the third thing I like about class-based views, and it makes your code more readable. So people get kind of confused about readability. Readability isn't necessarily that I can start at the top and I can end at the bottom and I know exactly what's going on with the view. Readability also comes into play when you can read a piece of code and understand it. Python is already great about being able to read it almost similar -ish to English. Um, however, you can make it better. So let's say you have you know, several chunks of code. You can give them very descriptive names. You, know, you could do something like um, get the last five places I went to or get last get the last five places user went to, you know, and you can put that in as a function. It does, you know, all of the pieces of things that it needs to do. And you put that into, you know, I don't know, your, your get, uh, and you know, the get, and it's calling that. And you're just kind of reading all of these other methods that you're just calling and passing in information. And you kind of read it like English. So not only is the code more testable, but you're able to read through and have a better understanding of what the code is intended to do, not just what it does. So I, I think readability and testability are, and are two great things and they kind of go hand in hand and you know, why I like to use class-based views. The fourth reason is I actually like the fact that the view do the as view inside of your URL and it basically returns a function that does dispatching of the request to the rest of the class-based view. The reason I like it is because it automatically restricts the verbs that are available to the URL um, because if that verb, so you override a get, you override a post, and you override, you know, delete. Uh, those are verb, you know, those are methods that you override in a class-based view. What the dispatch method does is it checks, are those verbs available on this view? If not, then I'm restricting it. You can't do that thing. Uh, something that comes up that I see a lot of people do is they create a function-based view and they're expecting a post to happen. They don't necessarily, they, they, they get in a hurry and they don't check that a post is is what, was, is what happens because they're like, oh, I'm the only one that's ever gonna use this code um, and I know a post is always gonna happen and so I'll just go with it. Unfortunately, somebody can come along and they can say, hmm, I can throw a get at this maybe and pass everything in as a query string and see what's returned back. And guess what, it works. I have messed with code that generates PDF files based on a URL that you give it and returns back or emails someone. And they intended to be a private post, but they ended up making it a public, just whatever. And I was able to pass get requests into it fairly easy and non and trivially and it was able to generate PDF files on their server. I don't know how uh, it was generating it um, completely because I didn't dig that deep into the code I was messing with to generate PDF files, but I would be willing to bet that there was an attack vector in there if someone so chose. And so that's kind of one reason you want to restrict it, um, especially it should have probably been a, an authenticated request in this case as well. So that's a, another reason that I like the dispatch, you know, me, you know, part and way of dealing with it because it gives you a little extra security for no extra effort. Um, and then, and then going along in that is it also has better HTTP compliance. One of the things in the HTTP spec is you need to have a head and an options request available for all of your endpoints. Now tell me how often do you actually make those for all of your URLs? You probably don't. Fortunately though, with class-based views, that's built in. It just exists and now your site's a little bit more HTTP compliant. Now, that doesn't really matter for a lot of things, 
But when you're going to build a, you know, API endpoints, it actually makes a lot of sense to have your head and your options available to kind of inspect and see what that endpoint has available for you to use. And again, it's just built into class-based views and you don't have to go through a lot of extra effort. So with that, those are really the five reasons I prefer and like using class-based views and generic class-based views. I would love to hear your opinions on using them and you know why or why not why you don't like using them. Again, I'm a proponent of using class-based views and um, I, I know people aren't. Uh, so please leave a comment below with why you don't like to use or you do like to use class-based views. And if you found this video interesting or entertaining, please feel free to subscribe and leave a thumbs up and also feel free to leave a comment and or a suggestion and I will be happy to reply. I want to thank you for your time and have a great day.